Hey, I'm Professor Perez. Today, we are going to take a look at subtracting negative numbers. Now, my students often ask me, hey, why does that work that way? Why is it that when you subtract a negative number, you end up adding its opposite? Well, we're going to try to explain this using a number line and use the fact that, hey, if you have a quantity and you take away the exact same quantity, you're going to end up with zero. It's like if you had five, take away five, it's zero. Well, if you had negative five and you take away negative five, you have to end up at zero. So we're going to show how this all works on a number line. But before we get started, we got to get out Charlie. He better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, you ready to go? Yeah. We're doing subtracting negative numbers. Mm -hmm. Oh, you think this is fun, huh? Okay, let's get started right there. Here's a number line. Now let's start with this word statement, four take away four. If you have four and you take away four, you're going to end up with zero, right? Charlie, if you had four apples and somebody takes away your four apples, how many apples do you have left? Zero. That's right, you have zero. So let's begin by translating this word statement into a math statement. Four take away four means four subtract four. If you take away, you're subtracting. Four subtract four, let's do it on a number line. Four subtract four gives you zero, of course. I mean, that makes sense. Now let's take a look at this word statement. Negative four, take away negative four. If you have negative four and you take away the exact same quantity, negative four, you have to end up at zero, right? So let's do this on a number line. First, let's translate this word statement into a math statement. Here it is, negative four, take away negative four, which is negative four, subtract a negative four. Well, let's start at negative four. Now, if we're gonna take away a negative four, we know we have to end up at zero. So to end up at zero, notice we have to move right four units. Because negative four subtract negative four has to be zero. Notice here, negative four plus a positive four gives us the same result. On the number line, we end up at zero. So it must be true then that negative four subtract to negative four has to behave the same as negative four plus four, right? Because they both give you zero as a result. So negative four subtract negative four. It's got to be zero. Remember, negative 4 subtract a positive 4 is negative 8. If you're subtracting a positive 4, you're moving to the left 4 units and you end up at negative 8. If you're doing negative 4 plus a positive 4, you're moving to the right 4 units and that gives you 0. And we saw earlier, and it makes sense, that negative 4 take away a negative 4 has to also be 0. So, let's summarize this. Subtracting a negative 4 is the same as adding a positive 4. So whenever you're subtracting a negative number, notice your subtraction changes to addition and the negative four changes to its opposite, positive four. So there you go. Let's take a look at a different type of problem. Here's three subtract negative six. Well, three subtract a positive six, three subtract a positive six, it means move to the left six units, that will be negative three. And three plus a positive six will be nine. 3 subtract a negative 6, well, it's got to be 9. It's got to be the same as adding a positive 6, because we saw earlier, subtracting a negative 6 should be the same as adding a positive 6. So let's summarize that. Subtracting a negative 6 is the same as adding a positive 6. Both answers will be 9. So let's apply this to some problems. Here we have 7 subtract a negative 2. We saw earlier that our subtraction will change to addition and the negative 2 will change to a positive 2. That's how it works. And to do 7 plus 2, the answer is 9. If our problem had been 7 subtract a positive 2, the answer would be 5. But because we're subtracting negative 2, it changes to adding 2, which gives us the 9. Here we have negative 5 subtract a negative 4. Subtraction changes to addition, and the negative 4 changes to its opposite, positive 4. Notice we don't change that first number, right? That remains a negative 5. Now, negative 5 plus a positive 4 will give us the result of negative 1. Okay, how about negative 2 subtract a negative 8? Well, that changes to negative 2 plus a positive 8. And once you make the change, just basic arithmetic, negative 2, move to the right 8 units, and that will give you a positive 6. If this problem had been negative 2 subtract a positive 8, it would have been negative 2 subtract 8, which would have gave you negative 10. 
Let's do one more. Negative 8, subtract a negative 15. Subtraction is going to change to addition. The negative 15 changes to a positive 15. So let's start at negative 8. We're going to add 15, so we move 15 units to the right. We know if we move 8 units to the right, we're at 0, and we have to move 7 more, and that takes us to a positive 7. So negative 8 plus 15 is 7. So, to summarize, when you subtract a negative number, subtraction changes to addition, and the negative number changes to its opposite, right? Now, you might be thinking, hey, with numbers, I don't want to change it. I know what has to be done. But the problem is, is when you start getting into algebra, where you have like x subtract a negative y, that has to be written as x plus a positive y. So we'll get to those problems later in the semester. But for now, that's it. Take a break, and be sure you do your homework. We'll see you again soon.